Okay. So, I don't know. That, that's a long time ago, too. That's, that's maybe 25 years ago. The common unity of our community to commemorate all those who lost their lives to make this day possible. Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, Ms. Major, and others should always be looked on as sheroes in our community, in our community's history. And it's important for young people to arm themselves with the power of knowing our history. Brown Lives Matter, Black and Brown, Trans Lives Matter. It's just really great to see all the solidarity, you know, the folks out here. Um, there's tons of contingents of, you know, working people who come out, they might not necessarily be queer or LGBTQ, um, and they come out to show their support for the community. Um, I really like the fact that we're able to put out a political message at the rally, you know, which, you know, over the years, prior to some corporatized tendencies, and it's, it's just these big corporations trying to advertise, but, you know, we're here to make sitting here watching the moon and it's more cheerful than I thought it was going to be. I, you know, with everything that's going on with the uh, negligence of people's needs, I thought there was going to be a lot of that. But people seem so in need of feeling joyous, feeling their individual selves with all their different ways of dressing. I'm just amazed. And came out in 1993. So the first year, I kind of came out to myself in 92 while I was in Pride, actually in a workers world contingent in Boston. Kind of was like, it, it became like, I'm talking about myself here. And then went out and partied. And with all these people who are like, aren't you straight? And I was like, I don't know. And then I moved to New York and I was working with young people and they just kept asking me about my sexuality and I and I was like, I, I need to come out. So that was part of the way I came out was actually because of younger folks in my life and I, as a social service worker who are like, we want to know, we want to know. And I was like, I'm going to tell you. And because they are like living their lives, particularly as homeless queer youth in the streets of New York City without shame and like in there, then it, it been, gave me the courage to come out. It's not only our banners that say Black Lives Matter, and Trans Lives Matter, and Black and Brown Lives Matter. I've seen it up and down even the street. And that's new. That's really as it should be. We're, we're transforming. Even with the black and brown added to the rainbow flag, it's so important. My favorite thing about Pride is how hard people work to get here. Showing off our incredible banner. Look at the faces of the spectators. And they're just thrilled to be where they're at. I hope it goes on forever. It was so taboo and dangerous for this community to come out and be themselves in this patriarchal, racist, misogynist, anti-gay society, anti-woman society. And so this is an important day of liberation. You know, it shouldn't just be once a year. People should feel this kind of freedom every day and everywhere. Maybe that's what the revolution's about. I think so. I think we need to make sure that the charges get dropped for the Black Pride Four in Columbus. I want to support to make sure that the police and across the country no longer feel like they can like march in Pride, and that the police occupation of Pride ends. NYPD out of Pride. NYPD out of Pride. NYPD out of Pride.
cop watch for Pride is the most, as a cop watcher, it's the most violent time is when I cop watch for Pride. Actually, to be even honest with you, I almost have to make a choice not to because it's so intensely violent for LGBT people during Pride. I, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I can put myself in that line of fire all the time as a cop watcher. We're here because we've been fighting police terror. Thank you.